is your house agriculture and forestry committee we're all here today and uh i hope you're all doing well uh, we have some special guests today to as, as you all know we start every meeting with a report on uh, covid 19 issues and we are very fortunate to have representatives of our federal delegation here today i actually don't see tom berry yet uh he was having trouble getting into the meeting so uh, so we hope that he is uh going to be able to do that right now i'd like to turn to uh erica cummings erica works for senator bernie sanders and we thank you erica for spending some time with us today we have about an hour to talk with the three of you and so we'd like to hear any kind of update you can offer us in particular regarding covid19 if you want to unmute yourself uh, that would be fantastic thanks carolyn um i was wondering who that erica cummings woman was <laughs> <laughs> My name is Erica Campbell. Uh, there is an Erica Cummings who is in, in the agriculture world. So uh, I, I suppose I something was wrong. <laughs> I suppose that, that could be an, an easy mistake. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Erica. No problem at all. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I mean, we we were going to start this presentation out with Tom because he was going to do a high level overview of the legislation passed so far, particularly the CARES Act. I'm on, Erica. Uh, oh, well, Erica. Yeah. Excellent. She's got Thank on. You. Thank you, Tom. So, but Erica, ahead, Erica, really, I, I don't know what else to do, so you go, you go ahead. No, why don't you go, Tom? Because I, I was going to talk about the nutrition. Um, so I think I think given the high level on, on CARES, where we're at, uh, talking about dairy, I think would be best and then i i mean I, I almost think maybe the nutrition should be last i'm not sure um ryan's going to be talking about a lot of the small business programs today which i also work on that issue so why don't you start yeah. and we'll go from there okay i'll start and, uh, get into the great program. welcome tom oh i'm sorry hi <laughs> hi everybody i think we're having a hard time hearing you oh there you are <laughs> Welcome. Tom, I can't hear you. At least I can't. I don't know what's going on, but we can't hear you. How is that? Is that any better? That is better. It's not great, but it's better. Now we can't hear you again. before i'm gonna i know at this point everybody i'm gonna turn off my camera maybe that'll help with the bandwidth okay i don't know where you live but maybe you just don't have the strength to do it from your area yeah you know i i i can't hear you that way either tom I'm seeing. Yes, it's still, we can't hear you at all now. Can't hear me at all now. Um, I'm going to. Uh, I mean, I can sort of hear you talking, but you sound like you're way far down in a well or something. I'm going to call in by phone. That's kind of uh, sucks if you'll pardon my friend. So I'm going to sign off on Zoom and call in on the phone line. Well, we could hear you just then. <laughs> you can hear me now. Um, we can hear you now. I think as long as you stay really. Uh, Let's give it a try. Let's call this back up. No, I think you should just call in. Sorry. We'll wait for you. Uh, we need broadband. Yes. We need fiber, actually. We have fiber running up the hill about three quarters of a mile from me. But can we attach to it? No. Mm. 
All right, we'll just wait for Tom. I wish I had some jokes I could tell. <laughs> we need fiber artists, Carolyn. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I told the guys I'm working on my um, the set of masks that'll bring me up to a hundred masks. So um, the sheep is still in a belligerent state of early labor. I don't know how long she can do this. So I've I've. If I am summoned because it becomes problematic, I will leave, but otherwise you're stuck with me. Okay, good. <laughs> we like being stuck with you. All right, no sign of Tom yet. I'm happy to start um, the nutrition update if that uh, would be helpful and we can, uh, Tom can, I, I, you either interrupt it when Tom gets on or I can finish up and sure either way. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you go ahead, Erica? Thanks so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, so for the record, my name is Erica Campbell uh, with Senator Sanders office here in Vermont. I work on nutrition and agriculture issues as well as small business. Uh, so just a quick overview of where we're at. Um, most of the nutrition support that's come through uh, the, these federal relief slash stimulus bills um, was actually in, the, in the, an earlier bill, the Families, Families First Act. Um, there's been the subsequent CARES Act that had, was a very large bill, um, and Tom will talk about that more, as well as Ryan. And when you're ready, if you, if you can hear me, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. If Thanks, you want to Tom. Better, it's fine. Otherwise, I'll jump in. Um, no, go ahead, jump in. I think that's fine with you. Great care, Erica. Yeah. Yes. Go yeah. ahead, Tom. Uh, okay, well, a little, little disjointed, but I guess so are a lot of things right now, right? Um, uh, not knowing what you may have covered already, I, they, uh, Erica probably started out by talking about the CARES Act, and I think uh, everybody's probably somewhat familiar with um, that legislation that passed uh, a little over a week ago, uh, and uh, the uh, it provides potentially provides assistance for agriculture in a number of ways. There are small business programs that I understand Ryan's going to take a deeper dive into, and all of us have been uh, scrambling over the last week to try to figure out exactly how those small business programs may or may not be be of help to agriculture and we can get into that um, further as as we go forward um, and then in addition for uh, agriculture in particular uh, the legislation does a couple of things uh, the the main agricultural section is uh, fairly brief uh, in fact i will read the entire section that is um, generally on agriculture, $9.5 billion to remain available until expended to prevent, prepare for, and respond to coronavirus by providing support to agricultural producers impacted by the coronavirus, including producers of specialty crops, producers that supply local food systems, including farmers markets, restaurants and schools, and livestock producers, including dairy producers. And that's Tom, it for, Tom, would you be yeah. willing to send that little blurb to Linda so that she could send that out to us? Yeah, I'll send that to her right now. And that's that's a fairly um, uh, brief description of how to spend nine point five billion with a B dollars for agriculture. Uh, and so it, it leaves a lot of questions unanswered. Uh, you know, I'll point out again that it. Um, is, you know, it specifically refers to uh, specialty crops and farmers markets and dairy, uh, uh, with dairy and livestock being the only commodity sectors called out, local food systems, a lot of words that we all like in Vermont and describe the Vermont food system. Uh, but the how these dollars roll out is left entirely at the discretion of the Secretary of Agriculture um, you know, within those fairly broad constraints of the legislation. So uh, the question has been for the past 
week plus since this passed, is how, how and when the secretary will begin rolling out these dollars. And uh, there's still not a lot of clarity on that. Um, in, in digging around and looking for some, some clues, uh, the U.S. House uh, Chair, Ag Committee Chair uh, Peterson did have uh, a conversation with Secretary Purdue uh, within the last couple of days and um, then made some comments related to what his understanding from Secretary Purdue was. And um, it was um, a long, what was said was, was fairly positive from the point of view of those um, uh, sustain, well, the, uh, the crop types mentioned, the uh, um, local food and food systems. Uh, uh, Peterson indicated that Purdue had told him that, that in fact it would be directed at those uh, types of crops and not provided to the larger commodity crops that uh, had benefited um, somewhat disproportionately from the trade adjustment payments that were made uh, in, in recent years. And so um, there's, uh, there's indications that, um, that there, there will be substantial funds paid to specialty crop growers uh, and dairy out of the 9.5 billion and uh, Purdue is quoted saying he will hold off on aid to commodity growers um, for now. But of course that will remain to be seen and, and there's nothing concrete that I've seen thus far. In addition to that, um, there, are, uh, there was $14 billion put into the, um, the CCC uh, funds and that's the, uh, the source of funds that provides not only for the market facil facilitation program, um, but also covers um, the uh, dairy margin coverage program. So that, that uh, account has been refunded. There's, there's money there and those dollars uh, can be and probably will be put out in more like the uh, trade adjustment payments that we're familiar with from the last couple of years. Um, and again, there's not a uh, lot of transparency yet on uh, when and how those payments might go out. Uh, and the bill also, and I know Eric is going to get into nutrition, so I won't go too far into this, but it does provide additional funding for a number of the nutrition programs as well. And I'll leave the discussion of that to, uh, to Erica. So, I think those are, um, you know, between the SBA programs that are to some extent applicable to agriculture and certainly to agricultural businesses, the $9.5 billion for uh, specialty crops, et cetera, and uh, the replenishment of the, um, the CCC funds and then the programs related to nutrition are the main areas in which the CARES Act uh, has provided funding. I will say, and again, um, without getting into details, leaving that to Ryan, that on the SBA programs, it's become evident that the money is gonna run out very quickly and the Senate right now is um, scrambling. Senator McConnell uh, wants before the end of the week through unanimous, unanimous consent to uh, push more money into the SBA programs uh, because those are becoming very quickly depleted, um, and uh, uh, so I can take I can take a breath and um, uh, and then get into any of this in, in more detail, or you know we can have a discussion. Uh, move, let the others uh, weigh in as well. Very good. Thanks so much, Tom. Uh, Erica, you mentioned that you thought Ryan might go next, and then you would you would uh, follow up with the nutrition, do you think that's a good idea or do you wanna continue? Well, I do because I, I think that the, the small business um, portions of the, especially the CARES Act are just so relevant to agriculture on and dairy farms, et cetera, right now. And it kind of makes more sense to lump those two together. So do you wanna go Ryan? And then I can, um, I can jump in on nutrition. Yeah, sure. Um... Thank you. I'm Ryan McLaren. I work for Congressman Peter Welch. Uh, and 
The two main programs I'm sure you all have heard about um, from the CARES Act through the Small Business Administration um, are the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, PPP, or the EIDL program, which is the emergency, Erica, help me out here. <laughs> I've lost the acronym. The, uh, um, oh, the IDL is, um, yeah. I don't have it in front of me, but it's um, emergency. Um, uh, economic oh. economic oh. damage loss. Da Sorry, thank you. What was the I again? <laughs> Injury. Yeah, that's injury, it. Injury. Economic injury disaster loan program. Um, good tag team. Uh, so for the purposes of agriculture, I think um, it's with the EIDL program, we can start with the um, baseline at this point, which is that the SBA is not accepting um, loan applications from farms. Um, and that's an area that we are seeking to clarify as a delegation um, with the Small Business Administration. It seems uh, relatively clear to us that that was the legislative intent that farms would be included uh, and that money would be available to them. Um, but the Small Business Administration up to this point has taken the view that if you have received a loan through um, the USDA at some point, then you're not eligible for that program. So the delegation um, as a whole is working to clarify that and to make our intentions clear that we expected, fully expected in writing the bill that farm businesses would have access to that program. So um, in the agriculture context, I'd say just stay tuned there. We can keep you up to date on um, that as it progresses. Uh, the other program, the PPP program, is open for farm businesses. And so that program is designed essentially to keep people on payrolls, um, both to benefit workers and employers, um, to maintain that employee-employer relationship um, and keep people off unemployment. And so businesses are able to borrow up to 250% of their um, average payroll, monthly payroll costs. Um, and there are a number, there are a number of things that are included in that um, up to $100,000 of salary for each employee. Um, farms are eligible as long as they meet the Small Business Administration's eligibility requirements, which generally is your under 500 employees. So that would apply to the, uh, I, I don't know if there's a farm in Vermont that wouldn't wouldn't um, be eligible for that under that threshold. Um, and uh, it also applies for um, independent contractors or self-employed folks. So, um, if you're running a very small farm and you're a sole proprietor of that farm, um, the program would also be open to you. Uh, it's important to note, I think, that the program opened to uh, um, Ryan, you're freezing up. I don't know if it's me or you. It's definitely him. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. There's some ag specific um, components to it. Like, you know, if you have an H2A or an H2B worker on your farm, that would not count towards your um, payroll costs. The uh, Ryan, you you froze up. Um, oh, sorry. And when you were you were talking about um, a business can borrow up to 250 percent of their average payroll up to um, 100. A thousand dollars per year for a, an employee. Yeah, um, and it's a ten so, million dollar max total. Okay, they can borrow up to ten million dollars. Yeah, and that is inclusive of um, the pay. The salary is capped at a hundred thousand dollars, but um, you can include um, 
healthcare benefits, um, leave time, those costs in the calculation above the $100,000 per employee cap. Um, it's really just the wage that's capped at $100,000. Okay. Um, and then for, you know, relevant ag for agriculture specifically, um, H2A and H2B workers wouldn't count towards the payroll um, calculation because the employee's principal place of residence needs to be the United States. So if you have um, US-based employ uh, employees, they would count towards that calculation. And then also, I mean, I think this is, it's, it, it counts the owner's compensation also. So in the case of a sole proprietor, you know, you're calculating what essentially is your payroll, um, as in what you take home. And sometimes that can be, it's confusing because um, in a lot of instances, it's not a lot, but, um, and so at the end of the, I think it's uh, early June, by early June, if, if you have um, used that loan to um, essentially for payroll for what it's intended, um, if 80% of that loan goes to maintaining your payroll, um, then that loan will be completely forgiven at the end of the loan period. So it's really a grant program as long as you're using it to maintain employees uh, in your business. So you can, you can essentially borrow or be granted $10 million as long as you keep your, your people employed. Could you just say that again? Sorry, I, uh, my computer muted you. Can you ask that question one more time? I, I said, so this is the $10 million uh, potentially a grant as long as you keep your people employed? Yes, exactly. There are, um, uh, there are requirements you have to meet to you when, as you use that money, but as long as you meet those requirements, um, it, it will be forgiven at the end of the loan term. So it will essentially convert into a grant as long as you're keeping payroll on board. And so I think the last thing I'll mention is that it, it is, there is some concern um, that this money is running out quite quickly. And so I, we're, we've been encouraging people that think they might be interested in it. Even if you're like on the fence, it's worth giving your lender a call like immediately um, to talk. Most banks in Vermont are able to process these applications at this point. Um, and the sooner it's a first come first serve thing. So the sooner you get in line, uh, the safer you'll be. There is, as Tom mentioned, a lot of work happening in DC, um, to add money into the program because of how quickly it's, um, been going, but, um, the sooner, the better for anyone that is interested. And that's known as the pay payroll protection program. Yeah. And I sent, um, Linda some like FAQs on both these programs before the meeting so she can share them with you all. They're really useful for businesses who are have questions. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan. All right. Um, can I can I add just a couple of things related to those programs? Sure, Tom. And then when you're done, you could mute yourself. That would be great. Uh, just because of background noise. Go, but go ahead. Well, yeah, I've been trying to stay on mute, but I might have forgotten there for a minute. Um, you know, we've all been troubleshooting these over the last week. And um, on the uh, EIDL program, you know, I've, I've dealt with a few uh, folks who were filling out the application. They consider themselves a farm and they kind of you put that farm box and you get shunted off the application. It's not available. But um, Maple is OK to apply. Uh, and I've, I've got that in writing from the Vermont uh, SBA folks. Uh, so if you're doing any processing, packaging, retailing, wholesaling of maple, as long as that's a standalone business from the farm, you're going to be okay. And then the other is that uh, for our diversified farms, if more than, and uh, people should look at this carefully, but if more than 50% of the revenues on the farm are coming from the, the retail farm stand, the uh, ag tourism piece of it, and then I talked to a farmer that was in exactly the situation yesterday, uh, they probably qualify for that program and they just need to check a box other than agriculture if they're getting more than half of their 
revenues from those other, you know, the maple sugaring, the ag tourism, the retail. Uh, if I thought of that as the the largest amount of the money that they're dealing with on the farm, they're probably qualified, even though as a far, as a farm or agricultural operation, they would not be. And that's the emergency injury disaster loan program. Right. And then one other thing that we've, I know the other offices worked on this too, people initially filling out the pay, paycheck protection program uh, saw among the SBA pre-requirements that any operate, any uh, small business, Ryan mentioned the 500 employee limit. Well, there's also a um, million dollar revenue limit and that doesn't get you much on a dairy farm. That's maybe a 250 cow, 220 cow dairy farm, depending on the price of milk. And you get bumped um, at that point, but we've been told that that does not apply to this particular program, just to other SBA programs. So any farmer that runs into that million dollar threshold um, can go right past it as well as the information that we have from the SBA. Okay, that's for the EIP. Okay. Oh. That's for the PPP. Oh, okay. All right, so now I'm a little bit confused. Where is that million dollar revenue threshold or cap? Um, for, for the paycheck protection program that Ryan was describing, the refundable uh, loan if you keep your employees on. And, and what was the first thing you mentioned regarding uh, a limitation on that program? There is a well, that um, program. Good. Erica, if you know, go ahead. Well, I thought you were talking about the limitation that Ryan had mentioned, which was um, around whether you were going to have a payback on um, the full amount of the loan or a certain amount. So that's a different issue. And I can, I, I did want to add a little bit of information there because um, it, in statute, it only does say six months of, of covering the loan. Um, okay. It's not fully clear yet from Treasury if they're if it's only going to be six months or if it's the two full year life of the loan, and that's on the PPP. But sorry, was there another a question that you had, Carolyn? No, I I was just a curious. I I want to get these um these programs straight because I'll probably mention in the, them in my weekly article. So on the the PPP, there is the you can't make more than a million dollars in revenue per year. Is that it? There's no amount of cap on the PPP, Tom, I don't think. Um, right, I, I was saying there is, there is no cap, but some people who were applying early ran into that as they tried to apply. And so okay. if they run into what looks like a million dollar cap, they should disregard it. Okay, fantastic. Erica, did you want to add to this? You're muted, Erica. Sorry, um, I just wanted to mention that right now, um, farm credits across the country are having a lot of tr trouble signing up to be an SA SBA approved lender. And uh, you have to become that to be, to, um, be able to give out PPP loans. Uh, here in Vermont, we're slightly better than some other places. We do have Vita back online to, to already do this. Um, most lenders are only working with existing clients um, or even sometimes past clients like um, Vermont Community Loan Fund is also working with some past clients as well. But if you don't have an existing relationship with a lender, it's going to be really hard to get a loan. And that is definitely um, potentially problematic in terms of equal access. Um, the farm credits have had a really tough time signing up for this. Yankee Farm Credit is ahead of the curve, but they have still not um, sort of sealed the deal to become an approved lender, yet they have 70 loans lined up. So there's farms ready to sign up for this program. and there's just hiccups and bumps in the road to getting um, certain uh, lenders on and certain people signed up. And there's, it's a constantly changing landscape. And so we're, the delegation staff is just trying to be up to speed as possible. Um, but again, it's changing all the time. Um, we've been really recommending uh, 
businesses and farms to contact business advisors on this to help make decisions. SBDC is extremely up to date on all of the changes. Um, and I think they're also passing that on to the farm viability providers. So, you know, we are, uh, we're really fortunate here in Vermont to have such an incredible network that of people that are trying to understand this changing landscape so rapidly and, and give our farmers advice. Great, Erica, does it make sense then if a farm has not had to take out a loan in the past that they contact, it sounds like VitaVac might be their best chance of making establishing some kind of relationship. So you just muted yourself, sorry. Sorry, I thought I was doing the reverse there. Um, I. I don't have the best advice there because I, I know lenders are, um, you know, being cautious on taking new folks right now when they have existing clients. And right now there's one of the biggest challenges between the banks and treasury were that they were given um, ter terms for these programs that were just not going to work well for them. And they they didn't feel like they'd have, there wasn't the uh, risk, uh, it, it was, there was just a lot of issues for the banks in terms of what risk they were taking on. And so, and, the, and, the, and just massive unclarity in the programs as well. So that's why they said, well, if we're working with existing clients, we they're in good standing, it gives them some assurance that at least that they can, they have a little bit more, um, uh, assurance there to to be able to have a um, make it work for their for their bank in terms of um, their their financial situation. Thanks, Erica. Uh, uh, Sharon Fagard has her hand up. Sharon. Yes. Thank you. Do we have any idea when these monies will actually be available? Anyone? That's a great <laughs> question. Um, I don't know if you have any more insight, Erica, but we, our office has heard from a number of folks, particularly on the EIDL program, because uh, at first the Small Business Administration was making the claim that people could get this grant money within like three days. And there's just, a there is a backlog once, I guess that might still be true if your loan has been approved, but there's a huge backlog in the approval process. So people's loans are still pending. Um, it's our goal and you know, I think the SBA's goal to get the money out as soon as they possibly can, but it's unclear exactly what that timeline is. Anyone else wanna say a word? Yeah, I, I say that very much the intent is to get it out quickly and people have queued up and applied. Uh, so from the perspective of how quickly federal grants and loans usually move pretty quickly, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see, uh, uh, you know, whether it's, it's days or weeks, certainly it shouldn't be any longer than that. Um, I, I'll add too, we're, you know, to totally confuse you on the terms loans versus grants the um, the uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL loan program, does start out upfront with a grant of up to $10,000, depending on uh, some uh, issues related to your business. So um, somebody who just says, I simply can't take on any more loans, there is a grant that's built into that program too, if the uh, person qualifies. And when we move forward to put more money into these programs, which may be happening within the next uh, few days if things go smoothly. I'm sure that, uh, I know in the Senate and probably in the House, there will be a move to include agriculture in this uh, EIDL program. So we'll let you know if that happens and that may broaden the program to include agriculture. Fantastic. Uh, Vicki, I see your hand up. Yeah, thank you. I'm just wondering what kind of outreach is being done to businesses or farms so they know these things are available. It always just kind of feels like a rumor out there. And when when can we do this? Is there specific outreach somehow happening? 
Vicki, did you see the um, Agency of Agriculture did send a newsletter out um, that included uh, a variety of information from the state, um, as well as there were, I think it was a link to the PPP and some of some of that information. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, there could be a little bit, I think it's from, from my perspective, from our office's perspective, we've been sending information a little bit out to our farmer contacts, but it has been changing so quickly and it's it's hard to sometimes know like how much you send out and versus how much it's it's changing. And so we've just sort of let our contact our farmer contacts know this is a you know a really rapidly changing environment and letting us know if you have questions. But I do think it's a great que a great question and um you know maybe that's something to ask um you know the, the agency of agriculture yeah um Thanks. vicky i i uh, there's sorry to interrupt but <clears throat> i was just looking and diane on friday diane sent out diane bothfeld sent a message that is basically a forward and the topic is or the subject is important news and ups, updates on covid 19 and they cover the payroll protection program, uh, the economic injury disaster loan, and a seven step survival guide, and one on one confidential advising. So you might look for that in your inbox from Diane on Friday. Okay. Sure, thank you. you know, and in putting information out, uh, it sort of seems like we've been hitting all the buttons we can. Um, we've been in touch on a, almost a daily basis with both of the, with DFA through uh, the folks up in St. Albans, as well as uh, Agrimark and, and pushing the information out through the co-ops. And then the Farm to Plate Network and other networks, uh, Ma Vermont Maple Sugar Makers Association. I think all of us are putting the information out and answering questions to, um, to all of those lists. So I would hope that a good amount of it's getting out, but um, you know, we can also, provides the documentation as a follow-up to this committee as well and you know sort of all hands on deck to make sure that people know about these programs and they engage Great. yeah and i believe the farm bureau is having a call at noon today actually just as, as after this meeting to talk about some of these things and um peter's gonna do a dairy teleconference call tomorrow um at two and I can send that call and information to you all as well. Thanks, thanks Ryan. Any other questions? Um, anything uh, any of the three of you would like to say to add to this? Sharon has her, her virtue, her, this hand up, <laughs> Sharon. I, I don't, I'm not seeing Diane Bothfeld's email on my, in my uh, inbox on Friday. So okay. I'll, I'll forward this to you. Thank I, you. I don't know who this goes out to. I know I get a lot of email from her. Okay, Terry, thank you. Get it? Terry got it. So uh, it, did you check your ledge email, Sharon? Yeah, okay. All right. <clears throat> would, would any of you like to, contribute to the conversation here. Any other questions? Okay. Do you want to cover the food security and um, hunger programs, Erica? Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Erica. Would you like to move? We can move to that if you'd like. Yes, absolutely. Um, I do want to say just before I jump in there, uh, one more piece of uh, kind of coordinating information and outreach um, is the Vermont Farm to Plate Network is doing weekly COVID meetings for the food system. And uh, Carolyn may be reaching out to Jake if he um, and connecting with him. Uh, those are really interesting to listen into. And there's also opportunities for updates. And it's, you know, it's the whole spectrum of the food system. So it's how our ag producers are doing, the nutrition side as well as sort of the supply of food and how um, it's sort of playing out along the whole supply chain. It's really, really interesting. And um, I, I encourage you to reach out for that. 
Okay, we are going to have on Friday, we're going to have Betsy Rosenbluth come and talk to us about farm to school, but, but is that Jay Claro? Uh, no, no, that, well, no, this farm to plate. So the farm to yeah. plate, remember the, yeah, the farm to plate network. So that the broader network, um, so and those are just, but, yeah. but Jay Claro, right? You're talking about Jake Claro with Farm to Plate. Yes. Yeah, so not yeah, so we'll Betsy's have, with Farm to School. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Betsy's going to talk to us on Friday. Maybe we could get Jake as well. We have two hours there. Yeah, so, but yeah. I was just saying, if any of you are interested in listening in, it's a great, to those weekly COVID Farm to Plate network meetings, they're highly informative. Um, and all the key players across the whole food chain, our food system are, are on it and giving quick updates. So it's just a great place in terms of um you know obviously bringing people in but if you're interested in in um joining that great thank you okay so let's quickly do i know we don't have a lot of time here so i'm going to fly through i did send a a document to linda yes would you like her to put that up she we're learning about sharing screen sharing i have it up on my screen so i'm just uh kind of gonna fly through it so as i was mentioned uh, as I was mentioning before, a lot of the nutrition programs that uh, in, increases in funding and uh, waivers and allowances uh, and slight changes to the programs came through the family uh, the Families First Act, um, and there was some subsequent um, additional funding in the CARES Act. So I'm going to kind of go through this by program. So for uh, WIC. Um, we had 500 million in that first um, act. And the biggest piece to that, besides just getting more money to the states to implement WIC, um, is a lot of different waivers. And when I, when I talk about these waivers, some of these waivers were just granted, but most of these waivers were, were sought out for, um, by our state agencies. And they had to like almost petition for these waivers. And the delegation staff have sort of been following along and helping get these waivers. But the state agencies have been doing an excellent job. The first, some of the first waivers they had to get for WIC was just be able to waive that physical presence because how, you, you how do you, how do you uh, get people signed up for WIC without having that? Um, the medical documentation waivers so you don't have to, um, to have to do those in person. And then sort of some more nuanced things around what's being offered, um, substitutions, because there's a lot of restrictions on these programs. So that's that's given the flexibility for our Department of Health to continue to serve um, WIC and sign new people up as well. So that's been really great. Um, the, our, our Department of Health has done an excellent job there. And um, We'll see if we get any subsequent increases in funding. Um, I don't know uh, what this fourth um, package will look like in terms of funding, but we're always asking for more funding for all of these programs. Um, so Erica, I, yeah. I would just ask uh, Linda if if she hasn't um, loaded this onto our website, if she could do that, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, again, this is this is a snapshot in time, and I've been adding waivers to this uh, like week, almost daily. So it it is again, it's one of those moving targets that it is the best. That's why I put a date at the top, <laughs> um, and I haven't updated it, but I don't think there's any new waivers this week. Um, so we're moving on to the um, commodity assistance programs and emergency food. The first bill had 400 million in it. The second bill, I believe, had 450 million in it. What that means is that our food banks uh, are getting more money through the TFAP program uh, for food assistance in Vermont. I believe that first round of 400 million in the Families First Act, the food bank in Vermont received about, I don't have the exact number in front of me, I think it was about $550,000. So obviously we, we get only a small portion of that 400 million. Um, and then in the, I'm hoping at least they'll have at least 600,000 in that, in that next round that should be coming. That's from the CARES Act that should be coming um, hopefully in the next uh, couple of weeks or maybe a month. I'm not quite sure how quickly we'll get that money. Um, the food bank has been doing an excellent job 
using this money. Uh, they are working with, you know, a lot of state partners right now, uh, trying to, it, their, their need has been, they're drastic, they're drastically up. Like they're almost like, I think have, they've sent out food and money to the food shelves around the state. And the need is so high that they do have a big concern that they're not going to be able to meet the needs, especially as, you know, the, this, these, these uh, direct payments to Vermonters, these unemployment benefits are, are, are still taking a while to kick in. Other, other, other support for self, you know, self-employed are taking a while. And we are going to see an increasing spike in food insecurity in the state, um, which, which is going to be pretty, pretty drastic. Um, and uh, we, they do have some waivers here. Uh, right now, we're still trying to get, so the main bulk of that commodity food money is um, through TFAP for, for the food, food shelves and the food, the food shelves and the food bank. But there's also that um, CACFP funding um, for adults. Those are like food box. There's like sort of like a, a pre-made food box that goes out to um, seniors that are eligible. And they're, they are trying to get some, they, they've um, sent out two boxes uh, in, in one delivery uh, kind of, uh, well, it's not delivery, it's a pickup, but it goes to, a, goes to places all over the state. And they're trying to get more food out, but they, they, are, um, they, are, lo they are looking, seeking for some additional flexibility there that we're, uh, we're monitoring. Um, and I just wanted Oh yeah, go ahead, Erica. Karen. Eric, yeah. Eric, could you could you just say what the acronyms are? Because not all of us are completely. Sorry about uh, that. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> um, so CACFP is. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I actually put this um, waiver in the wrong place. I'm going to send you a new document. I. I dumped that in here and I was thinking CSFP, that's the Commodity Supplemental Food Program. That's for the seniors. I, okay. I, I accidentally put this CACFP in the wrong place. It's actually, this is actually child and adult um, feeding program, care feeding program. So those are for daycares and adult daycare centers. I, I'm gonna move that in the right place. And then um, I added it the last minute this morning, I'm sorry, and I, uh, I put it in the wrong place. Don't worry about it. Just, uh, if you can uh, just uh, spell out the the acronyms the first time sure. around, that would be great. Thanks. Absolutely. And just want to say one more thing about this commodity food money. We are hoping in this next round in C4, uh, we're calling it the, the fourth um, relief act, stimulus act, um, that there will be more money um, for commodity food. Uh, but we would love to see some flexibility in how that's spent. And we, all the offices are, are pushing for that money to be able to be just given to the food bank, to be able to buy directly from local producers, rather than having to just go through sort of this commodity buying system, which comes in from often far off places. So that is something that we're all looking into, and I will, we will keep you posted on that. Um, SNAP. So we had um, we had increases in the amount of money overall. Just knowing that there would be more people eligible as they lost their jobs, but we have not actually seen any kind of increase in um, in actual uh, amounts per per family or per person who gets who gets SNAP. So. So there's um, there's a lot of work I think we we need to do in SNAP and all the offices are working to um, get get a boost in SNAP perhaps change some of the income eligibility um, and basically just to really um, beyond just sort of ramping up ramping it up in terms of um, allowing more people to access it which is very important but but changing and making things a lot more flexible. Um, the other piece I just wanted to mention that's not in here, but all of our offices are talking about it is right now, if you're using, if you're, if you're on three squares Vermont and you have an EBT, you don't really have the option of 
um, ordering something online or doing like a call in with curbside pickup uh, because of the strict rules that SNAP has. So that's very problematic when you have somebody at home and they, um, they are at risk and they do not want to be exposing themselves by going into a store. So all of the offices are looking at a bunch of different options. There's, there's possibilities for on, uh, to try to push USDA to do online, uh, allow online SNAP purchases um, or some other possible fixes there. So I just wanted to alert you to that, that we're having that conversation. Um, so for senior nutrition, I just wanted to mention that there was more money in the um, Families First Act for uh, Meals on Wheels, as well as, well, it, for congregate meals, although they can't congregate. So a lot of those are pickup service um, right at the, so the, the senior centers, for example, will be making making food and um, they'll be pick up and then they're doing, a, you know, obviously Meals on Wheels, we've heard the numbers are going up and up. The need is there. Seniors need are, are you know sheltering at home, need more food, um, and so we're we're mon all the offices are monitoring that situation very closely, um, checking in with the area agencies on aging and uh, making sure our seniors um, have adequate nutrition. Uh, child nutrition and school meals. There has been an incredible amount of waivers there. Um, our schools are doing, you've probably heard, just a phenomenal job at, at uh, using these waivers to creatively continue to get meals uh, to uh, students um, through bus routes and, and all sorts of different things. There's a whole list of waivers that I included there that our agency of education has done a great job and the delegation has worked with them on securing and I'm not gonna get into all of those, but I'm sure you've heard stories in your community how just incredible this is. Uh, one issue that you know, Hunger Free Vermont's really alerted us to is, is this, um, and I'm sure Betsy will mention as well when she comes in to testify that this, um, uh, that when, when the school's done, what's gonna happen, and a lot of schools will continue through summer feeding programs, but if a school doesn't wanna do that, they don't have to, there's no mandate that they're they're not required uh, like they are now to provide meals to, to students. So we, we are worried about that potential, um, that potential happening. Um, I, think Erica, I'll, I think I'll stop there and uh, take questions. Erica, when, yes. when this, if the schools were to continue the summer feeding programs, would they get the same kind of reimbursements they do during that actual school year? It's a slightly different formula because it's a different program in a way, but um, yeah, they, they are, there are, um, there's still reimbursements and there is actually some pretty good flexibility within that summer, that summer feeding program. Um, there's also this, um, and I didn't write it here and uh, Betsy may know, and of course, Anora would know from Hunger Free Vermont, but um, this, something in the last bill that had a, around summer EBT. So giving students um, like three squares Vermont cards for their families to be able to use during the summer. And I don't have any information about that here, but I will, um, I'll work with uh, Tom and Ryan's counterparts in their office who cover nutrition and make sure we get something to you, Carolyn, um, about that summer EBT program. That would be fantastic. Thanks so much, Erica. Are, do we have any questions for our three guests today? Vicki, her hand is up. Vicki, you've got a blue sky again with clouds. So sometimes it's hard to see your little hand. <laughs> Vicki. Uh, sorry, couldn't get that button. Um, Erica, you mentioned about commodities increasing, um, increasing funding for that. And we just heard yesterday how dairy farmers are struggling because we can't um, consume dairy products at restaurants and such. So are commodities, try I'm sure they, they, produce, uh, they uh, provide dairy, but are, are there efforts to even increase that in, through the commodities to help farmers? 
Yeah, we've all been talking about it and maybe Tom can chime in because we did, um, our offices sent a letter uh, our, to USDA asking for dairy purchases for commodity foods. Um, and there's sort of this ongoing conversations. We were on the phone with DFA yesterday talking about this. Uh, lots of different conversations. Uh, I don't think there's a ton of clarity yet exactly how we can do that, especially thinking about it from a Northeast perspective with, um, with our plants. But Tom, do you wanna, do you wanna add some, some there? Hold on a sec, Tom, you're muted. Okay, there you go. Try again. Okay, I, I unmuted myself just with the button here. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, as, as Erica said, we uh, weighed in early on with a uh, letter pushing for uh, bulk purchase of commodities, just seeing what was gonna happen in the dairy sector pretty quickly. And um, we're working on uh, a letter now, Senator Leahy is working on it with uh, uh, the ranking member uh, uh, Scabineau and looking for a Republican sign on. And uh, we're also uh, sharing it with uh, Senator Sanders office and um, kind of a, all, all of the above uh, for help with, with dairy. And that would, that would double down and again, request uh, that there be bulk purchases of dairy commodities, um, as well as loosening to some of the standards around uh, whole milk and feeding programs. Uh, so those, those efforts are being made. Um, and I talked early on about the money that uh, Secretary Purdue has to spend uh, fairly broadly. And, and uh, those dollars, some of them could go to these types of purchases. So is on the list of things that we're pushing. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Uh, John O'Brien's hand is up. There we go. Um, Erica, last week we heard from Abby Willard, I think, and she said that you could buy seed starts with SNAP benefits. And so, if you could help us also with getting both word out to people on three square, um, but also trying to include nurseries maybe in that too, as far as like a curbside pickup for people wanting to use their three square or um, you know over the phone, be able to use um, your card, EBT card would be great. Okay, thanks, thanks for that. Also, um, Sharon has her hand up. Um, Sharon, are you going to mention what Jackie Folsom sent to you? Okay. Okay. So Jackie Folsom contacted me and let me know that with the summer feeding program from the schools, that the word is they'll be reimbursed for the food, but not the transportation. Okay. Thanks yeah, for that. That's a great, uh, great point. And that's very true. So Schools will have to, if they want to keep doing that, we'll have to dip into their own um, their own uh, budget. You know, yeah. in looking at how we can fill some gaps here, uh, I would suggest, and I'm happy to continue up with folks, I also cover FEMA for the Senator, and where we have schools uh, or nonprofit organizations stepping up that have an unmet uh, financial need, if the program, for instance, around feeding doesn't cover that, there's a substantial chance that they can be reimbursed by FEMA if they're providing food, shelter, medicine, et cetera. So I would encourage feeding programs, schools or otherwise that um, don't see all their costs being met to um, conf confer with the Vermont Emergency Management folks and uh, see if they can apply for FEMA reimbursement for those expenses. Great, thank you, Tom. I see another hand up from John O'Brien and then Sharon. Sorry, I forgot to put my hand down. Oh, okay. Sharon, oh, your hand is down now too. Okay. <laughs> We're still getting the hang of hands up and down and muting and what have you. All of this is just to practice for when we go on the floor. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Tom, did you want to say something about dairy? 
I got, there's a, I feel like an air traffic control person here. I got to tell you, because not only are we, I, am I paying attention to the screen, but there's chat going on, which is basically sending me messages about stuff. So <laughs> if I get distracted, please understand. Tom, did you want to say something about dairy? I was just see whether we want to discuss that some. We already talked about the bulk purchases and uh, I'll make a, a plug since it looks like Ryan's still muted uh, that uh, Congressman Welch, I believe, is doing a fairly comprehensive call on dairy. Is that one o'clock tomorrow, Ryan? Uh, yep. And I'll send the info to Linda so she can share it with you all. There is some, we have a cap on how many people we can have on board, but um, so I would just encourage everyone to register if you're interested um with the link that i'll send around but yeah we'll be doing a call um to hear from the uh both anson at the state and then hear from folks with agrimark and the co st albans co-op dfa um and uh the organic folks to just get an update on the state of the market and then we want to hear from farmers so if you know farmers that are interested or have questions please share the info with them um, we want to know what they're dealing with and how we can be helpful. Ryan, thanks for that. We did get a message um, about that. Maybe it was from you. I know that we we noted that participation was limited. So Terry, who is our representative to the Milk Commission, signed up for that. And if you think that there's room and we could all be part of it, maybe those of us who aren't uh, committed already to something else could could hop on. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get an update on um, what the registration looks like and see if we're approaching the cap. And uh, if we're not, I'll certainly let you know um, that there's some room for you all. Honestly, thank, thanks, Ryan. Honestly, I think that if there are farmers who would like to be on that, I wouldn't want to take one of their spots. I'd rather have Terry represent us and, and listen and then report back. We could hear from him on Friday as well. So... Uh, maybe we do want to limit the number of us who who hop onto that call, but uh, as long I, we don't, I think my message is clear. We don't, we don't want to take the uh, a place that could go to a farmer. Yeah, appreciate that, and I'll keep you posted. Great, thanks so much. All right, Tom, Additionally, you... I just say on, on yeah. dairy that there, there's a number of proposals that are circulating. I know that uh, Secretary Kevitz has some ideas uh, and the, Vermont, the National Milk Producers Federation has uh, put out their agenda. And as I said, Senator Leahy is working with Sen Senator Stabenow and others on um, a letter to Secretary Purdue. They sort of all in approach to open up the dairy margin coverage program uh, for folks to sign up who uh, are not signed up with uh, some more support for the premiums, um, the bulk uh, commodity purchases that we talked about and um, uh, other uh, other efforts to uh, to help help dairy. I know the National Milk Producers proposal actually has a uh, a growth management component as well. But the you know the feeling really is that there there needs to be uh, a lot of activity pretty quickly to um, uh, help get ahead of what is is a quickly uh, evolving crisis in dairy where nobody really has much of a much of a, cu a cushion um, and for the secretary to use every authority in in doing so thanks tom regarding our cheese makers uh it would seem to me that they would Thank probably me. benefit from either the paycheck prevent uh protection program or the eidl does anybody want to comment? Uh, I think the answer is yes, for the, for the most part. I mean, I would certainly encourage them um, to reach out to their lender of choice, someone they have a relationship with now to explore it. Um, because I specifically the uh, PPP program would apply um, depending on with the, their business model and how much of their income comes from cheese and how much of it maybe comes from fluid milk, the EIDL program might be a little bit different, but um, they, yeah, it, it's obviously they've lost sales to restaurants and um, 
uh, in shops. So they've been hit particularly hard and we've heard from a lot of them. So uh, encouraging everyone that could potentially benefit to look into the PPP program specifically. Good, good, thanks. Anything else you wanted to add? All right, I'm not seeing any hands and I'm not seeing Tom, Ryan or Erica waving at me on the screen. <laughs> so it, it did uh, cross my mind um, with the video set up the way it is. We don't know whether you're knitting or not. I, I'm not knitting. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> excuse me. My committee knows I am making surgical masks. And what, what I told them earlier was that when I finish this, this batch of 10, I will have made 100. So they're going to hospitals, Grace Cottage, Brattleboro, Springfield, um, someplace else. Oh, the retreat. I delivered 25 to the retreat the other day. So, so I've been busy. It's keeping me off the streets, that's for sure. <laughs> and I'll just also note, I know each of our um, offices is keeping very up-to-date list of resources on our web pages. So I know a lot of other organizations are as well, but for additional information for any of your constituents who um, need, need to easily access what's going on and where they can get assistance, I, I'd refer you to any one of our uh, web pages. Thanks, Tom. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate everyone's contribution today. Thank you so much for being with us. And if we have any follow-up questions, uh, we'll have Linda reach out to you if that would be okay. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate it. You're welcome to stay with us on the meeting or not. You're welcome to leave too. <laughs> but thanks again. And thank, thank um, the the senators and the congressmen for all their work down there. I can't imagine what it's like at this time, uh, just kind of crazy, but, but thank them for us, please. Thank you, Carolyn. All right.